what I share to you guys in case uh, so that if you want to do it on your own, it's easy. Okay. So um, you you copy this URL. I you copy this URL to um, you copy it. Then you open it. This is it, right? Or the next thing you do is just to go to Splunk Cloud Trial. You know, then you um, you create you create a, what's it called an account. So you just create an account. Yeah. So you sign up and you create an account with a valid email address. Once you do that, this is what will come up. So you get, of course, your email. So Splunk will respond to you and send you this, right? Yeah. So they will send you a username, SC admin, and a temporary password so that you just click here and update your password, right? That is what I did. So once you open this link, it will show up like this, right? For you to update, change your password, right? So once you change your password, that's all you are into Splunk. And I'm going to show you this platform, my own right now. Uh, so this is mine. So this is Splunk, this is how it's going to be. Um, so this is how it's going to come out, right? So um, I want to, just a minute, please. I want to do something. I want to uh, delete a log and we upload it back so that you see how logs are uploaded on Splunk. So currently I've deleted the log source, my Linux log source. So I want to upload it back so that you guys can see how I, I uploaded. As you can see, there's no record. There's no record currently for this. So we are going to do that. We are going to start from uploading it. So when, once you create your account and you updated your password, this is where you come. Then you go to settings and you come to add data, right? So like I said, because this is a demo, we are going to use, um, because this is a demo, we are going to use, um, I, 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 I sent the link for that, for that um, um, raw file that you can use. Once you click here, you will be able to download these three files that you can upload to for your own lab, right? So I already have them on my system, so, what I'm going to do is to upload them again. Uh, let me come. Okay, so you come to upload. So once you click, like I said, you click on settings, add data, and you come to the upload. Upload for my system. So you, you look for where the file is located. This is it. Then on your system, then it's going to, going to upload. And why it's uploading. So this is the step that I sent you guys to upload. So when you download the, the data, it's going to be in a compressed format. You're going to un uncompress the files and upload them individually, as you can see. So I put all the steps that are required for you to, uh, to do this, right? So let me check. So it's still uploading. Thank you. While this is uploading, let me ask a quick question, Nelson. Okay. So, um, folders. Yeah. How can you, how soon can you um, get, okay, no, let me ask this. If you want to get this log on your own system, yeah. how do you generate it? 
if we want to get this log. So, you know, the, the log, the log is, okay, if we want to use um, the window event log on your system, for example, Oh, you know, the, okay. those logs are already on your system. They already reside on your system today. You have security logs on your system. You have, um, uh, what's it called? So if it's a firewall, for example, you can, or um, any other, uh, uh, maybe, uh, how do I put it? Like an endpoint, for example, you can generate syslog. All you need, what the folder would do is like, it's just a .esc file that you, you will install on that endpoint. You now you it all it will require from you is the IP address of the of the Splunk server so that it can connect to it. So during the installation of the folder, you just put the IP address. Then you will now specify which kind of log you want to generate. You want to uh, forward. So you will see it on the folder to say, okay, is this syslog or window events log, right? So once you select all those options it will now start and the, and the installation of that folder is successful. So whenever there's a, a new window uh, event log on your system, the folder will move and, um, um, and move those, uh, those, those logs to the, to the Splunk server. That's what it does. It will, it will upload them to the Splunk server. So you have to ensure that there's connectivity between the Splunk server and the forwarder because that is what will be moving, uploading the log. Just like we see uploading, so it's it will just be like the folder is doing this automatically on your endpoint. Okay, I get that. Thank you. Let's continue. Thank you. Sorry, I have a question. Sorry, um, I joined in a bit late. I did not get the um, um notification on time. Okay, so if I can one, ask a question now, please let's um um just, let's complete the class. So that we'll okay, that's fine. De delay the answer. So let's okay. let's type all our questions, please. Let's compile it so that it take it one by one. All right, okay. thank you. So okay, so we have uploaded our log file like this. The, the next thing we are going to do is to uh you click on next. So this is a source, this is a source type, as you can see, source by default. Um, what's it called? Um let me show you guys. So, so you can see this is the name of the file, right? Then when I upload it on Splunk, that is the source. That is so. So the source we uh, let this the, this this uh, portal lets you to see how Splunk will interpret the logs that you've just uploaded. So, so okay, this is Splunk is saying that this is how I'm interpreting the log that you just uploaded. So if you are fine with it, you just move on to next, right? Then, sorry, sorry. So uh, we have the source, but now I need to select a source type. So I need to go, this is a Linux log. So I'll go to operating system, then I'll go to Linux secure. So I have my source type as Linux secure. I have my source as this, which is the name of the log. Then I move on to the next parameter. So yeah, I'm just going to use what I have, what I sent to you guys so that it will be easy for us to see. So um, this is a web application log for, on Linux. Uh, so I'll, you, you can name it anything you like, right? You can give it a host name. So this is where you, you put the host, the name, like I, like I explained to you guys the other time. So after putting this uh, review, these are the parameters that you submit, right? So it's submitting, then it's uploading that file. So at this point, what is happening that is going to, it's going to index the file and store the file on the log server. So um, yeah. So once this is done, then we'll go to the search part to explore some of the information. I think those are just see, that's those are just the steps required to upload good data on screen. Okay, so somebody is asking if there's an open source alternative to Splunk. Yeah, there are there are open source. Um, I think there are open source scene. Uh, of course, like Wazoo, 
I know of Wazu, but and I also know of a Alien, Alien Vault has a, a, a an open source um, open source uh, scene too. You know, but Splunk, I think it's is is the free trial for the cloud. The cloud version, the free trial is about fifteen days. Uh, why the uh, the um, on-prem version is like I think about thirty days or thereabout. Okay, so right now we've successfully uploaded our file. We'll go back to the home page, then we want to see, confirm uh, the details within our file. Okay. So also uh, before I move on, these are what I was I was trying to explain to you guys earlier. These are the various apps that you can use. These are various ap applications that are uh, that that you can connect. You can connect with your Splunk. You know, so it's Splunk very very flexible. Um, not just for cybersecurity purpose, for but for different various form of analytics, you know, web monitoring. It has a lot, a lot of applications. Right, it's currently about a thousand app, right? So that you can use to integrate. Some of them are not free. Some of them have free trials that you can use. So, um, okay. So let me go to research. Okay, right now we can see um, let me just put source. I want to check for how many source uh, data we have currently. I'm going to do a white card search. And because we are using a manual data, I'm going to do an all time search. This is where you can pick uh, the time range to narrow your search. So because we're not using real time data. So you can see from, so from this part, these are events. These events that we have, we have about one, 195 events currently. Now the events are being pulled out from three different source. Sorry, three different source. As you can see, this is the one I did just now. This was the ones I did earlier, right? So these are the three different source, sources of our events, and there's different source type too that we, we, we name our event, right? And also it's showing that we have we have event from two different hosts. So what 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 can we make of this data? I'm going to run through some um, some information. One of them is we are going to be checking through two major, one is the Linus and the second one will be the access.log. So the Linus, the, the Linus uh, log is for the web server and the access um, 30 days log is for the web application. So we are going to be seeing some common use cases, right? That, that are very conversant that uh, um, a lot of cybersecurity analysts might be seen on a daily basis. Now the question is, um, we, let me say as a security analyst, I'm, I'm in charge of monitoring uh, my, my company's network. The first thing I do on a daily basis is to come out and say, okay, how many failed logon events, for example, do we have in the logs? So what I want to do is this, I want to search for failed logon events. Um, um, there are two ways I will do that. I'll do this, I'll do a failed, in case you have fails or failed. So I'm going to do fail with white card, then I'm going to do uh, something like, because the, the most common um, use cases that we have is around brute force attack. So is there any failed password attempt uh, with, in the log for that we have at the moment? So it's, it's going to check, okay, um, for anywhere we have failed, so I'm doing a white card, I'm using the and operator, I'm using, so I'm searching for any field password attempt anywhere right now. So from what I'm seeing, if I'm looking at my selected field, I'm seeing that how many source type is so, you can see that we have field logon attempt from our uh, web server and our application server. So if you look at the count, this is very uncommon. If you look at the Linux server, we are having about 49,000 failed logon attempts. So it is something that you need to look onto because when you have so many failed logon attempts on a particular um, 
uh, from a particular server is something that you have to investigate. So let's go on to start investigating this at the time. So you can click on this. So you see what happens. It has added the source to the search field. Are we seeing it, right? So right now, the only source, the only uh, source we are having now is the Linus log so, so that we can streamline our search, right? So the question now is, we have over 49,000 field log on our things. We want to see how many, uh, uh, where is this coming from? Uh, we want to review the log to say, okay, let's have uh, an understanding about the parameters that we have in this log. You can see that we have field password for invalid uh, Ubuntu user from this IP address on this port and SSH, right? So these are the parameters that we have. I would like to see, okay, we have an IP address. Uh, from, from my experience, I would like to include IP address because why? Because if you take a look at this log, you will see that the IP address is not just one. We have different IP addresses here. So I want to also include my IP address from this interesting field. I want to add it to the selected field. So what do I do? I will come um, and go down to IP. You can see that what, what this 100 plus means that we have a 100 plus IP addresses, right? With failed logon attempts. So that means you are going to start investigating because when you have um, more, than one, uh, more than two or three failed logon attempts, it's, it's something that you will need to investigate. So when there are now more, it's something that you seriously now need to investigate. So we have a lot of IP addresses that have field log on attempt. So I'm going to include IP address to my search to make sense, right? Also, another interesting field I'm seeing here is process. You can see we have just one process. It's telling us that all the field log on attempt is coming from just one process, which is SSH, right? So it is something that we need to investigate. So how do I add the IP address from interesting field to selected field. All you need to do is just click the IP address like this and add it and click yes, selected, yes. So it will be added to the selected field, right? Also, I want to add the process because it will be easy for me to search right, like this, right? So, uh, So is it hard? Okay, the process. So what did you, so you guys, I want you to note something. You see that the selected field that we have, you will see them here, all the selected. So when you add a selected field, you will see them at the bottom of each of the logs. The IP address, the host is showing that the web application is showing the process that the user is trying to log on. Uh, yeah, it's the process that the user is trying to use for log on and the source of the log and the source type. Right, so we can see that we have various, um, what's it called? We have various um, IP address. So the next thing I want to do right now is, I want to be able to say, I want to search for um, accounts. I want to do accounts, right? Uh, I want to do accounts by IP address. Okay, so what I'm seeing is, uh, Okay. So I want to do accounts to classify all my um, IP address. I want to see the total number of counts. Start counts by IP address. Sorry. Just a moment. So 
this tab. Okay. Um, so it's classifying both IPs and ports together. So I'm, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to remove the ports and the, um, the ports aspects. Okay, so um, um, what I've just done is to first thing to list the top most IP address that have failed logon attempts. So from here, what I'm seeing is that I have, um, what's it called? I have this set of IP address. I'm seeing that this IP address um, has a total count of 99, uh, 999 failed field logon attempt, right? Uh, we are going to analyze some of them one by one. I just want to show you. So this is top 20. If you want to re reduce it, all you need to do is add, you can maybe reduce it to 10 for you to, to see the top, top um, uh, what's it called, top IP with the field logon attempt. So if I click on this IP address to view events, I want to view the event to um, have some sort of visibility onto what is happening. And if on the ports, you know, gather much details on what is happening on this IP address, you can see that our, for example, our um, our search has changed. So currently we are just searching for this IP address alone. And um, um, I'm just trying to make sure to see if there's any other details around the different case. So I, what I'm seeing here is that apart from port 22, I'm seeing that the IP address is also attempting to SSH using other ports like port 169, uh, 1697-4395. Um, we have different ports from here. So, so, so for me as a security person, I would want to investigate this because this is not a normal um, behavior. This is abnormal. This is not, this is not, uh, this is, this is yeah. like, you are, you are having some sort of brute force attempt, right, to gain entrance into um, a system um, at this point. So uh, I'm, I'm also going to take a look at the other IP address so that we can just see the behavior of what is happening at the moment. Okay, somebody dropped a question of search parameter at least. So can I have a search parameter at least the common ones as snipers so that I don't have to type. Yes, of course. Yeah, very, 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 very. In fact, that's the smartest thing to do, right? So for me, what I do is that um, I think it's Toby still in this call. Hello. Yes, I'm with you. Okay, so uh, what I'm calling calling his name is this. So for me, that brings me to this question. Uh, you can see if you don't have some sort of um, notepad for your stuff. You are, you are, you are, you are, you are, that means you are not very serious, to be honest with you, because there are a lot of stuff to do. I have a lot of, I think Toby has said, talked about this. If you have a search, make sure you index, make sure you search, because there's so much you are doing. You have to work with a lot of resources. So for me, every search that I do, I index it. Uh, you can index it on a notepad, which is for me the best you know, something that you can reference to and get, get by on, right? So it's something that, of course, that is very important. So um, that's 
to answer that question, I would say, of course, you can, you can, you can do, uh, save all your searches like this. You can just save it so that you don't need to be typing them again. Like, I could think that's what I would do. Let me just drop, uh, drop it this part in case we want to come back to that. Um, so, sorry. Uh, yeah, nah. Okay, so we can go back to our, our account to see, to take it. So this set of IPs, for example, if I'm in a, I'm, I'm talking about a real life scenario now, if I'm working on a project and this is what I'm seeing, these are the first, these are the first go-to IPs that I need to investigate. Why are they having, I want to investigate who have this IP, whose system have this IP, how long have the user been using it? What are you trying to do? You understand why are you using the SSH? Is it that you forgot your password? Or what are you trying to achieve? You need to investigate further, right? On this log to make sense. So this, these are signs of brute force attack, right? So now let's let's talk about let's let's talk about um um what other use case do I have in my head? I'm just trying to remember. Okay, okay. So um let's let's take a look at the other 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 source let me just go back let me take let's take there's a lot we can do with all this log to be honest with you so let, let me take a look at this log now let's investigate um a little about our our is it called sorry yes our web application log now you let me create this scenario. You are you, you are a cybersecurity analyst, and you have you are working for a company that have so much internet presence, right? You are you, and you, you are responsible for making sure that we don't have cross-site scripting, DDoS attack on our web application. There are certain things that you need to be paying attention to, right? And the first of all is uh, you want to see check on the get requests. Uh, you want to ensure you want to see the get you want to just be familiarized about uh the kind of log that you get that you have currently from different ips what are their parameters so that you can use them for search for example you want to check that uh we have a java session id is it unique we have status that is recorded right you want to you want to be sure that it's not so as you can see we have different status http status here um that we have apart from 200 so we want to investigate why for example why are we having http status 404 for example something that we need to pay attention to so um let's take a look at i want to ask a question how do we for example gather um how do we search for the um, the top list of ips that are visiting our website that that is also a way to check if our website is being compromised is or is is under an attack or or, or a DDoS attack. There's is something that we also need to pay attention to, right? So you, you have to keep at every time monitor the top clients, IP address, external IP address visiting your website. How do you do that? Right. So we are going to query for that. We're going to do a get, then you can do a pipe, for example, then let's say uh top the top command is used to query the top um the top um, um events uh from your from your log so then we want to limit our top to say let me say we can say 10 or 20 let me put 20 our top then uh let me put it as uh, this got 20 right so i want to get this of course then um what else i want to i'm getting client right i'm looking for ip addresses Right. So the question is, why am I using client IP address? So let me do this. If I use IP, what will come out? Will it come out? Are we going to get any results from here? So I need somebody to type on the chat. Why do you think I'm getting no results? What do you think, guys? Why is this not giving me the right answer? Can any, do you guys have any um, opinion or suggestion? You can type on the chat. What do you think is the reason why I'm getting this, even though the command seems correct? Okay, somebody just dropped in the chat. No source, no IP specified. I spec look I, I okay, I I put IP. I, I, I placed IP here. 
So somebody say no source. Okay. Uh, is that the reason? But see, okay, look at this. This I, I'm using get now, right? I didn't specify source. Why am I getting record for only gets? I told you guys earlier that even if you don't specify source, right, it's optional, but based on best practice, it's good, right? To specify your source, of course, but that is not the answer. Is there any other person? Uh, okay, so let me bring back the let me bring back this. So if you don't specify source, it's what what does it mean? What does it mean, guys? If you don't specify source, it will take a search on all your sources. That is that's what, and it's just going to take longer time. The lag is going to take late. The latency is going to be high when the throughput, right? So, but when you specify your source, it's going to stream, streamline your search. So now, um, the reason why this is failing, I will tell you. That's why is is the first thing is not to jump and search. The first thing is to familiarize yourself with your log. Now look at this log. I want you guys to take a look at this log. We have the host as web host. That's the name of the uh, um, host, right? This is our source. This is our source type. This is our status. This is our Java session ID in case, especially for web application that uses cookies, right? So that uh, for, for session management, right? Now, this is our client IP. Can you see what I'm seeing, guys? The client IP, look at the field. The field that I'm using here is IP. What should I be using? What do you guys think? What should I be using based on this search? To search, I should be using what? I should be using um, client IP, not IP, right? I should be using this because that's why it's very important to familiarize yourself with the feed of your value, right? Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Chinaza. So we should be using the client IP for this. So let's change, I'm gonna change this to client IP. I'm gonna change this to client IP and see what we have next. So we can see that, you can see that we have a record. Why? Because this, don't forget, these are field. We have to use the field in our search, the exact field in our search. So what is this telling us? These are the top clients. These are the top IP visiting our website. What does it mean? Guys, I want to show you something. If you are not sure, these IPs could be from an attacker. These IPs could also be from a legitimate user. How do you, are you sure that this IP is not a malicious IP? Who can tell me, please? Anybody, any, any suggestion? How do we know? How can we show, how do we investigate that this IP's address are legitimate and not malicious? Well, well yes. It's not an 100% way to know, right? But I'm going to show us some ways that I use. What I do is that if I'm in, on a client's network, I get a list of IPs that are trying to connect. The next thing I do, I visit a uh, virus tutor. You can go on virus tutor, right? Virus tutor is an open, uh, open threat intelligence platform. You can use it to search for IPs address. You can also go on, what was it called? Hybrid analysis also to search for IPs domains. These are very important platform, right, that you can use. So also, there's also a platform that you can use to search for malicious information. These are what, these are tools that you'll be using every time now and then. So I'll, I'm just going to test, take one or two of those IP and search for them right, to see the reputation of that IP address, right? So, you can see that no security vendor have flagged this IP as malicious, right? So that means that IP is legitimate. So especially for top IP addresses that visit your site, it's very important that you ensure that those IPs are not malicious by checking open source intelligence platform like Virus Total. Then also we can, you know, sometimes I like to search other, other vendors, not just on Virus Total alone. So what I'm going to do is this, I'm going to, Drop a search. Um, I'm going to drop this here. <coughs> oh, sorry. So, yeah. yeah. I dropped it at the wrong place. Let me drop, let me search the last part. So, like this, you can search. 
for the application of an IP address to see to see where is it coming from, which CDN is is, is currently being induced, right? So if it's malicious, you are going you are going to see this IP, especially external domain, right? So um, on hybrid analysis, okay. So so from what I can do, you can so you can also search for other IP address to be sure that the number of IP address trying to visit your website are legitimate, 